My name is Dean Hartley. I'm the General Manager of Iothotics and CIO of Healthia, which is an allied health uh, company which has a few divisions, which is Iothotics, My Foot Doctor, All Sports Physiotherapy, and, and a few other sort of business to business um, uh, companies. My name is Dean Hartley, and I've got Gwen Evangelista here as well. We're actually podiatrists by degree. We have a lot of podiatry practices around Australia. Part of our group, there's about 70 podiatry clinics around Australia. And iOrthotics is, I guess, a manufacturer for those podiatry clinics. We make custom-made foot orthotics, like you can see on here. We make um, AFOs, like for kids um, and adults, and arm splints, and, and just a whole range of just different even engineering parts as well for the wide industry with our 3D printing technologies. And so once we receive the scan from the podiatrist, we import that into our custom software. You then make the orthotic to the patient's foot, and then from there we can instantly send it to the printer to be printed. The advanced manufacturing is helping us from a scale point of view, but what's actually happened now is it's actually making us uh, manufacturing here in Australia globally competitive. So if you go into you know, mass manufacturing in China and you know, make this part 10 million times and that we can't compete on that, but we can compete on our, what our skill sets are here um, and, and that's through advanced manufacturing, so having mass customised parts um, and that can only be done the way we do it and you do need, it's a, it's a whole different level of manufacturing than what it used to be. We now don't just make orthotics, we actually make parts for drones, we make you know, custom door chocks, we'll make whatever you could possibly imagine through our, through our printing facility. So we're actually a print bureau service as well. And really what we're trying to do here is show you that why these, the STEM you know, curriculum and the subjects and that and how it relates to industry and how you're going to get jobs at the end of studying these subjects. I remember going through school where they would, you know, what does algebra do or you know, why do I need to know what this equation does or why do I learn about biology? And then hopefully I can sort of get that real world understanding of how this then actually relates because you need to be an engineer to run these things. You know, you need to be a, a, a mathematician to sort of program them, um, et cetera. So that's what we're here to show them. The subjects that we're talking about in STEM, whether it's science, tech, engineering, maths and that, there's all pieces of that that have actually made this business um, from a digital supply chain, which is our website. So that um, podiatrists and clinicians and actual customers on the other end can upload files and orders to actually in our facility here, it controls our whole workflow as well. So you need programmers to do this. We need engineers upstairs to, pro um, to build and um, program our printers, um, et cetera. So it just goes on. So this is our 3D printing facility here. We're gonna do literally a little uh, horseshoes type um, walk through our design area there, just so you can see the guys that are on the um, CAD software at the moment, just so we can show you what that actually means. So this is um, um, Luke and James, they're two of our designers here with it. And if you see on the left-hand screen of James's computer there, and then obviously on, uh, on Luke's here as well, what they're actually doing, this is CAD software, okay? So computer-aided design software. Um, and what we're doing here is actually, we, you saw on the video how you take a, a scan of a patient's foot, a, a digital foot scan, and they're actually working to the prescription that the podiatrist or the doctor sent to them, and they're actually designing those orthotics to them. So every device that's made here is, is fully custom made, and it will take them anywhere from five, 10, 15 minutes or so to design that pair of orthotics. So that's what computer-aided design means. So Could you work together with shoe companies to get the profile in order to get the correct profile for your orthotic to fit into? Or? Correct, yeah, yeah. Um, the podiatrists are very skilled though as well in terms of they know sort of what they're after. They've seen so many shoes, so a lot of running shoes are very similar sizing. So they'll order it knowing that as well. But yeah, we do we do actually work with the shoe companies and a lot of downstairs, we even have like a range of some shoes and that as well to make sure we get them the right shape. Now, you've seen 3D printers before, the little ones in the corner over there. You might have some at school. I'd imagine most schools have got some 3D printers in that these days. So when we first started doing I guess our own research and development into 3D printing orthotics, I actually started using a lot of different types of these little printers here down the end. And at one stage, we had about 20 of them going like yeah, um, in the corner over here, printing all different materials. And we worked with the engineering department at University of Queensland to test all our materials. So we needed to make sure the strength of that material was the same as what the, the old material was that we're making it out of. And so the, all the engineers at the university would test all that material for us. So then you move along to, you know, what we use now as our 3D printers. They're obviously a lot bigger, a lot more expensive, um, but they're faster, 
way better products than that out of them as well. So these are our 3D printers. We have three, so there's one down the back and there's two here. So just think about this as a desktop printer, like a 2D printer, okay, printing on paper. Um, but our paper in this case is actually a powder, okay? So that's a nylon powder, um, a pure nylon powder. And so what happens is these cassettes here, underneath in here get filled up with powder in one of these processing stations. And so there's about 50 kilos of powder sitting in this unit at the moment. What happens then, it gets pushed into this uh, printer just here. And you can see here um, that there's what, well, this is like the print head. So we talked about a 2D printer, this is the print head. And it's actually the same technology that's in a desktop printer. That's why HP do it, they're very good at it. And it has an ink or an agent in it. These here, are like heat lamps under here. That actually heats up the powder to about 220 degrees. And what this machine does is it lays down about 100 micron of powder, about 0.1 of a mil, and then it drops the agent, the ink, in that area where it needs to be. And then it will go back and forth and it'll keep going backwards and forwards. And it builds up layer upon layer upon layer. Um, and then what you're left with it at the end of it is you'll have this big bucket here full of powder and we'll be able to just pull those parts out of it and then we can actually reuse all that powder back in the next build. So the waste component of what we do was one of the main reasons why we actually looked into this technology. When you'd make a pair of orthotics, the old way using, um, we, we talk about routers. So what a router is, you'll see that downstairs where it cuts the orthotic out of this type of plastic here. So that weighs about um, fully, it's probably about 20 kilos for that. and you would make about, um, about eight or nine pairs out of that block of plastic. Um, but the problem is you would throw away about 1.5 kilos of plastic for every pair of devices you'd make. Now we print it and we throw away probably about 30 grams of powder per pair. So our waste is not quite 100% um, sort of uh, no waste, but we're very close to it very close to it. And that was actually the one motivation for us, one of the biggest ones. Because some labs in Australia, orthotic manufacturers will make 10, 20, 30, 50,000. You know, there's labs in the United States that'll make hundreds of thousands of these. And so you times 100,000 by 1.4 kilos, there's, um, what's that, 140 tons or so of material that would go into the, into the ground as landfill. So something we're really proud of now is because of the technology we've done, we actually don't throw that much waste out anywhere near it anymore. And how much are we talking about investing on the machine? This one here, the, that just unit's probably about half a million dollars. So um, plus the processing station and that. So in this room up here, there's probably about um, probably about two and a half million dollars worth of equipment in here. Yeah. So um, it's not. As industry, we need to make sure it worked because <laughs> we, we don't have all this money coming in to sort of fund this. So it actually had to work and save itself. So we get our payback and efficiencies that when the parts come out of the printer, there's not as much manual work required to do it. And it's a better product. We don't charge more for the product. We actually probably charge less than what our industry does. Um, but that's where our time and savings and that come into play. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely have had some help from the government and from industry to help with our R&D but the majority of it's all self-funded and that to do it. But it's a new industry for us and now we actually send parts all over the world. So we're sending to the United Kingdom, New Zealand, we started sending stuff to China now, the US. Um, yeah, so it's, it's making a whole new industry for us. How come Mr. Hartley, they're buying their orthotics from us instead of getting them from China? Because no one can do it like we can. So <laughs> Australia is known for its quality niche products. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's a, so this is the new, Everyone said manufacturing's dead, okay? And that is when you look at trying to make, you know, a thousand sheets of this plastic because the wage costs and that, you've got to just get it from China or Taiwan or wherever that might be. But advanced manufacturing like this, where there's so much um, IP involved in it and skill to do it, is it actually makes us very competitive. And now we actually, we've created a whole new market. Is that known part of the orthotic or is that just the bedding material? It's just the shell, we call it. So. Um, Sorry, Trace, can you just grab one of those? Sorry, this isn't actually one of those. This is actually nylon material as well, but a different printer. But yeah, that's the part it will make of the orthotic. Um, and then you put the top cover on it like you would have seen downstairs or other additions. So there's still a lot of hand finishing to it as well, but the actual shell component. So we're doing a lot of research with the universities and, and HP 
with the new material that we can actually print the whole device itself. And we need to program the software to do that properly. We need to be able to program the printers. So we need people who are really good with, um, with application and software development. We need engineers to help us with it here. Um, maths, all these words are just key <laughs> to making this work. Do you think that's because of your design thinking? You could see a problem, so you've been able to use your design thinking to come up with a solution? You know, I don't know everything here, but I guess one of my skills is I can go and find the person who I think can help with the solution. And so problem solving is just key to everything. Yeah. You know, if, if you, I couldn't tell you how many times we've had problems. You know, the part didn't work, the printer failed, it broke. And if we just threw our hands up in the air and said, oh, it's all too hard, we'll worry about it later it wouldn't get done, so it's problem solving and critical thinking. The way we're setting this up in how our whole business is, we can pretty much teach anyone any of these processes. So, um, although it's good in certain areas, we need, yes, we definitely need certain skill sets, but it's that actual motivation to work um, and that drive to actually sort of make things better. So we don't just want to do the one process and just do it the same way for the next 10 years. It's actually how do we refine that, make it better, make it more efficient. Um, and so we look for characteristics in people that we employ that actually are trying to push themselves just like we are as a business. The routing of orthotics is, um, has only been mainstream for, for probably six, five to ten years really. We've been playing with 3D printing now for a few years, all right, so um, it's changed very quickly. One of the good parts about printing, and Dean would have mentioned that, is the waste. So yeah. we, um, you'll see in a second, we, we're still um, routing milling EVA rubber because there's no substitute currently that we can print. Okay. TPU is a nylon. Uh, it's made up of a lattice work, and um, we'll start testing that with HP soon. So I would say in about 12 months, we'll be able to turn off all these routers. This is what we're, we're milling. So we start with a big um, block of rubber like these here. We've got a, a, a soft rubber there, it's uh, uh, like a Shaw 25. The black's um, a little bit harder, Shaw 35. And the brown rubber, wherever that is, um, is a higher density. So for instance, if we have a diabetic patient who needs a softer device, then we start with a softer block of rubber. Now out of that big block of rubber, um, we load up, um, I think we can get about five or six pairs onto a block and the machines actually carve um, out these devices. The guys will, will, um, will cut these off of the block and then they'll give them a quick little grind and then they go into the area we just walked through where um, our techs will put on some soft covers and various other soft tissue additions. But it all starts with the routing, so come on through. Hold on. So all of that waste but it goes into the landfill. Particularly um, horrible, and Dean would have showed you the plastic block up there. Uh, about 1.5, 1.6 kilos of waste to, um, to mill, route a pair of orthotics. That's basically what goes in the bin. So we're really looking forward to turning off those machines. Technologies underpin our growth like wholeheartedly. So old school methods of uh, manufacturing, especially in the orthotics game, is just, it's slow, it's archaic, it's messy, it requires a lot of different um, specialised skill sets, whereas now with the technology that we've implemented, we can actually scale our business significantly and using skill sets from all different industries. You don't need to have a, be an orthotist of 20 years experience. It could be a, the guys we have here are bakers, fitters and turners, you know, trying to get out of probably other industries. Um, we have retired marketing guys, things like that, actually trying to upskill and get into a new industry. And that's what it's, yeah, that's the most exciting part. Um, we, we have had basically the same designs in these plastic orthotics and rubber orthotics for about 60 years. So now with 3D printing in particular, it gives us the ability to, um, well there's no limit on design. We can really change the industry overnight. The students can expect uh, a, lot, a lot different than what they would have expected, I guess, in the old way of manufacturing. Being stuck in a, an off, uh, you know, a warehouse or a manufacturing facility in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, getting dirty and dusty and that, and that's what we're trying to change, that, mis, uh, that misconception there now. The advanced manufacturing is, is sitting in the air-conditioned room and actually sitting behind a computer programming um, and doing parts like that rather than sort of, I guess, getting down and dirty the whole time as well. So it is really flipping manufacturing on its head.